Hi, my name's Bob Grinier, and I'm a volunteer with the Martin Fleischmann Memorial Project. This video is another introductory video for the translation proposal to translate Alexander Parkamov's book, Space, Earth, Human. I don't believe this reference is in there, but it's supporting the kind of field that the book is in. And this is talking about the Nobel laureate Morris Elias, uh, who was a Frenchman, a bit of a genius by some counts. This article by Lawrence Hacht, identifying a new physical field. Just a couple of points. I'll obviously give a link to the article in the description of the video. And Morris Elias did some experiments in the 1950s with pendulums and gyroscopes. He went on to do some experiments here uh, about the lunar solar influence when the uh, you've got a, an eclipse of some type. And he's saying, The behaviour of the pendulum during a total eclipse of the sun on June the 30th, 1954, gave added reason to suspect a gravitational influence linked to the luni solar alignment. A sudden variation in the azimuth of the pendulum of a magnitude never observed in any other continuous observation period took place at the start of the eclipse. Similar anomalous behaviour of pendulum during solar eclipses has since been observed by others. However, an analysis of by Elias showed that the difference in gravitational attraction exerted by lunisolar alignment upon a point on the Earth could not give rise to such variation in the pendulum for the order of magnitude of such effect is 100 million times smaller than the gravitational field that derives the pendulum's fall. The bottom here, after a little blur, it's essentially saying that something else is at work. So they talk about various potential causes um, uh, and uh, periodicity uh, before going through here's some explanations here. But there's a proposal here and it says... To these considerations, we'd like to add one other case of unexplained periodicity corresponding to the solar and lunar day, as well as to longer cycles which came to our attention only recently. The nature of it is such as to lend an added breadth to considerations raised so far. These are the periodicities in metabolic activity observed in organisms as diverse as crabs, salamanders, potatoes, seaweed and carrots, as reported some decades ago by Northwestern University biologist Frank A. Brown and colleagues, in one especially provocative series of experiments, Brown and collaborators observed the cycle of a shell openings and closing uh, in oysters that had been tr transported in a photographic dark box from New Haven, Connecticut to uh, Evanston, Illinois, uh, maintained under conditions of artificial light, pressure and temperature, the bivalves nonetheless gradually changed their time of opening to correspond with high tide as it would have occurred in their new landlocked location. How they received the time signal remains a mystery. Brown later found an inverse correlation of the metabolic activity of these and other organisms to the intensity of the cosmic ray flux. Okay, and then down here he's saying, what is most intriguing about the new physical field of which Elias experiments gave evidence is the suggestion of an effect not clearly linked to visible objects nor to any sensible phenomenon of which we are presently aware, even including cosmic rays as presently understood. So, essentially... Uh, some similar topics uh, of the effects are uh, going beyond um, uh, just so, sort of basic gra gravitational observations and pendulum movements are discussed in uh, the work of Alexander Parkamov's book uh, and uh, were researched in Russia uh, by colleagues uh, during the early part of his work that led to that book. And uh, I I'm going to expand on this in the next presentation, but essentially... Um, what we're seeing here is that uh, animals and other creatures and even plants respond to something that's going on 
that is driven by gravity. And I think uh, Alexander Parkhamov's suggestion that the lensing of neutrino flux, these cosmogenic uh, s uh, ultra slow uh, neutrinos, not the ones that are traveling at near the speed of light, but these ones that are traveling at 10 to 1000 kilometers per second, um, these could be playing a role uh, in biology and physical processes uh, and nuclear processes all throughout the universe. So thank you, and I'll see you in the next video.